Hello and welcome to AutoInform How-To Workshop. My name is Frank Massey and we're going to take a look at injectors or more precisely how to test injectors. A little bit of an overview, a little bit of history. Traditionally injectors have changed dramatically over the years and the reason for that is the accuracy with which they deliver fuel. It is the business end of fuel delivery. A lot of people forget that diagnostic process should also include the ability of this injector or injectors like them to deliver fuel accurately and precisely into the combustion area. This is a traditional early variant of solenoid injector. They can be tested in various ways. They can be tested for electronic functionality, current flow through the actual coil, hydraulic functionality, which is really what this test bench is all about, and we're dealing with things like uh, volume, spray pattern, all the issues that, 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 that fueling uh, evaluation is, is about. So this is a fairly traditional early variant of a solenoid injector. Traditionally they were ground controlled, ground as on as a control uh, function. We did go through a phase, a little bit of a disastrous phase in reality. Single point injection came along. In effect that was an, an electronic replacement for the carburetor. Didn't last too long. Um, so that quickly now we're very unlikely to see any of these single point injectors anymore. Then the manufacturers, as always, try to save money, reduce the size of the components, came to this area of the injector, much, much smaller injector. And if you recall how much physically bigger that injector was, much more robust coil, much more robust internals. Um, whilst these were very light, very light internal inertia, which was good, but they could be moved more quickly, which is good for fuel control, um, they did have some reliability issues. Then we've gone to our present position. This is one example of a direct petrol injector. You may notice one of the more obvious features, a much longer nozzle, because this injector delivers fuel, like a diesel engine, directly into the combustion area. These can have different physical shapes they can be ground switched, they can be power switched, and they can also be piezo injectors. So these cover a whole range of uh, different types of functionality. However, the how-to bit has remained fairly consistent. Once you've established that there is the possibility of a problem with the way in which the injector delivers fuel, we then turn to uh, a flow bench. This particular tool, um, we've been fortunate to have experience on for, for several years. Our knowledge goes back to the very early days when we had problems with uh, leaded and unleaded fuel contamination and we get a whole new new um, range of problems now from excessive EGR contamination, carbon contamination. So in effect it's all come full circle. We're back to testing injectors probably as much as we did in the early days but for different reasons. The set of injectors I've chosen came out of a vehicle, actually came to our workshop. The, the vehicle has been repaired, um, that, that part has been resolved, but it came in poor running. What I would describe as a lean running misfire type symptom, very high hydrocarbons, very erratic running, lacking power, just, just not running well at all. We very quickly diagnosed uh, or, or ruled out ignition as one of the, the problems, um, came down to fueling, tested the current through the injectors, that was okay, and here we are now. We've got the original injectors out of that vehicle in the bench, we're going to now test them electro-hydraulically, if you like. So let me go through the process of how to. I've not done anything with the injectors other than clean them externally. I don't want any contamination in the, in the bench, so they've been thoroughly cleaned externally before we've mounted them on what is uh, a fuel rail. The chemical that flows through them is not fuel, it's a simulated uh, fuel consistency, so the functionality of the test is as reproducing the conditions as near as possible. Um, the machine has a pump inside which provides variable pressure, we can adjust the pressure, we can monitor the pressure, and through the control panel we can change the way the injectors are being driven. So let me go through some of the ways in which we test these injectors. They've been connected to um, a loom already and the injectors are numbered so we can be specific on the panels to which injector we're focusing our test on. 
So let me just go through the first of the options that we have. So this is the test phase. We can prime the injectors. We've mounted them. We need to make sure that there is no air cavitation taking place in the injector. So during this stage, I will set the pressure. We traditionally use 40 PSI as a test pressure. It's, it's one of those constants you have to set. Once you've set it, it becomes part of the database in, in effect. It's, it's, a, it's a pressure we have experience with across like all the range of injectors uh, and that purely has filled the injector full of fuel so we know there's no longer any air in there. Next is a leak test. Now <laughs> you can see already these injectors are terrible. I've, I've deliberately picked a set of injectors which really demonstrates just how bad these can be. They're already dribbling. This test however will run the pump but not drive the solenoid. So effectively there's hydraulic pressure behind the injector and we're testing the leak rate and that is a terrible result. There should be zero hydraulic functionality. They should be at what is referred to technically as hydraulic zero. No discharge whatsoever. And you can clearly see that is a problem. Symptoms as this would produce um, delayed starting for two reasons because you would have lost rail pressure because of the dribbling. The cylinders would be full of fuel, so when the engine did start, it would be very rich, very smoky, whilst the cylinders cleared. And probably then once it ran, although your hydrocarbons would be high, um, it would run reasonably well, and probably run reasonably well at very high speed. Those are the types of symptoms. Poor starting, very rich running in the initial few seconds of running. That's the leak test. Next we're going to look at electrical resistance. Although we have actually tested these injectors on the vehicle, this checks in effect the way in which the current's flowing through the control solenoid. And these injectors are numbered, there's only four. So we're only going to take notice of the first four of these injectors. These normally are a 15 ohm injector. That's roughly what we'd expect. These resistances can change. But on this particular variant, we are expecting 15 ohms. 14.4, 14.9, 10.4, not good. 6.7, so that number three injector, number three is orange. So that particular injector is down to seven ohms. That is a partial short circuit. That is definitely a faulty injector. And the fourth one, 13.5. So out of all those four injectors, there's only two that actually meet or closely meet the 15 ohm requirement and the second and third injector really are so far out of specification they are scrap there's no point even putting those, those injectors back in the vehicle which is why they're still here we have replaced all these injectors with a new set however that test has concluded very accurately the ohmic value of those injectors whilst being driven is out of specification the next test is flow and we can actually change the flow of these injectors and we can actually capture and measure the flow rate so we may have a situation where the they don't leak um, where the resistance is normal uh, where they are not discharging or delivering the right hydraulic volume so what we're going to do now is to collect um, the fluid in these graduated beakers and we have the set pressure. Now, when you conduct this test, you can vary the, the duty, the opening time of the injector, because don't assume that the injector will work normally at idle right the way through the range. It could be okay at idle, it could be a problem at high engine speed, it could be a, uh, a problem mid-range. And by varying the way in which we test these injectors, what the duty time is, we can determine exactly what the performance is. What we're looking for there is balance. Now, to be fair, balance isn't bad. We normally look for around 10%. That's 10% based on 100 mils discharge. So I need to flow these some more. Initially, balance looks okay. Despite the fact there is ohmic resistance problems with the, the drive coil, we're also looking for pattern. We're looking for the discharge. Now this is a, a needle type of design of injector. You get fantail, 
with a broad range of angular spray pattern. You get a needle sharp, fine discharge, which is this particular type of design. That's determined by the nozzle design, the pintle design, and the nozzle design in the injector body. And what we're looking for is a very clear discharge right in the center of the flask. And they're actually not bad. You'll notice that the, the impact the bubbles are going all the way to the bottom, which suggests that the actual discharge of fuel, or simulated fuel, is good. And once again, they're all reasonably even. That one isn't quite making the same impact as, as those now. So under normal events, we'd vary the time period at which we test these injectors. Now you can see the more we test them, your averages now start to jack up. Now you can see that, if you recall, that third injector was the one with the, in, the, the worst variation, deviation, in the ohmic value. And we can see now that's lagging seriously behind that one, which we assume is the best. Now, of course, when I say the best, it could be that one's actually delivering too much fuel. Uh, we're just comparing them as an average across all four injectors. We have to be sure they're delivering the correct amount of fuel. So we, can t we carry on with that type of test um, until we're satisfied throughout the entire speed load range that these injectors are indeed okay. But just going back to this resistance test, number three is still pulling 5.96 ohms, number two, 10 ohms, that's now dropped to 12 ohms, and the only one now performing, number 4, 13.5. So you can see, as we put current through these injectors, their resistance really is well, well short of, of apart from just that one injector, and that one, of course, is discharging the most of the fuel. So the one with the correct resistance, or the nearest of the correct resistance, is performing the best. Um, so you can see there the advantage of looking at this type of test. Interestingly, when we come to test the very latest of injectors, we use a, um, an individual trigger box, a direct injector um, trigger box, and it actually tests the inductance process where we're looking at Henry's rather than ohmic value, because these injectors are required to deliver fuel at much, much higher pressure, between 50 and 150 bar of, of pressure, directly into the cylinder, where the response time and the actual performance of, I call it fuel transportation now, fuel transportation is delivered in one of three ways. It is spray guided. That's the performance of the injector, the angle of the nozzle, and the angular um, discharge of the fuel. Air guided or turbulence guided, by induction flap control, and finally wall guided, where the, the shape of the piston crown directs the fuel in the direction of the spark plug. So these injectors have a great deal more uh, of, a, of a robust job technically to achieve, whereas this particular set of injectors, which came out of a, a fairly early Peugeot Vertel, have, in comparison, a fairly simplistic job, although these are actually performing very, very badly. Uh, what else can we test? So we can do flow, and we can vary the flow as I've suggested. We can clean the injectors. Uh, these are not appropriate for cleaning. Um, we clean them ultrasonically. Um, ultrasonics create cavitation or tiny implosions of energy at around 40 kilohertz frequency, and that quite literally shakes off the contamination, the lacquer deposits and the, and the debris from the injector, whereby then we can restore the injector back to correct normal service. And of course, we can replace service items such as o-rings and the very fine filter baskets which actually sit in the top of the injector and form yet a further fuel filtration device before the fuel enters the actual injector itself and filtration is a very important issue now especially with the very high pressure systems so we can clean the injectors and we can do a dry pulse and we can also do cold start, which is um, a very high volume delivery test. And finally, we can actually calculate the flow rate through the injector. 
Uh, we do that normally in a wide open pintle where the injector is held on permanently and we actually measure the discharge of fuel um, and we can then calculate the correct flow rate for that injector. So there's a whole range of tests we can do but the point of this uh, how-to is that there is no guesswork. Once we've come to the conclusion that this is a fuel delivery problem and that can be done through evaluation of lambda or an exhaust gas analyzer the really accurate testing, the final confirmation then, is done in a bench like this. And that concludes this month's Autoinform How-To Workshop. And thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in the next edition.